The assembly of the transmission begins at the input transfer gear. Make sure the needle bearing is installed cup side up. Next, the planet carrier is installed. Make sure it seats properly and spins freely. The needle bearing for the small sun gear is installed again cup side up. Then we begin to put together the B1 clutch. First we install the shim, two of them. Then we install the outer plates, followed by an inner plate. The B1 clutch takes four outer and four inner plates. The B1 clutch is responsible for is the reaction component in reverse gear. So we go with the outer plate, the inner plate again, the outer plate. The final plate is the pressure plate which installs flat side down. Next component to be installed is the dished spring or the return spring. It is installed dish down. Again, make sure it is properly seated in the case. We now install the B2 support assembly, which includes the B1 molded piston and the freewheel. It is fitted on top of the dish spring. Also, the oil hole should be indexed to the bottom of the case, the B1 apply port hole. The B1 support or the freewheel should be carefully fitted to the planet assembly. There is a special tool for this job, but it can be done without it. Installed properly, the assembly will turn clockwise and lock counterclockwise. Sir clip is installed in the lower groove to lock the B2 support with freewheel in place. A second sir clip is installed in the upper groove as a seat for the B2 clutch support tube. Make sure the sir clip locks in place. At this stage of the assembly, the low reverse clutch, clutch is air checked through the B1 sealing plug as shown. Air pressure for testing around 30 to 50 psi. Check that the clutch applies and releases without hanging. This is the end of the installation for the reverse gear brake or the B1 clutch as it is called. Turn the transmission in the device so the bell housing faces up. The next component to be installed is the large sun gear which is installed in the planet carrier assembly Turn the large sun gear several times in both directions until properly seated in the planet assembly. The applied K2 clutch drives the large sun gear to create reverse. Additionally, the B1 clutch is applied to lock the planet carrier to the case. Make sure the axial needle bearing for the large input shaft is attached with assembly lube with its cup face facing up. The large input shaft is then installed on top of the large sun gear. 
the large input shaft is plying to the small sun gear in the planet assembly. The applied K1 clutch drives the large input shaft and is responsible for first, second, and third. Use assembling lube and install the cage needle bearing into its place on the large input shaft. Install the needle bearing for the small input shaft using assembly lube to keep it in position. The bearing is installed onto the large input shaft. Once again, the needle bearing is installed cup side up. Lube the small input shaft with assembly lube before installing on top of the large sun gear. The small sun gear is plying to the planet carrier. Turn the small input shaft to ensure it is properly seated. Once installed, the small input shaft will turn in the clockwise direction and lock in the anti-clockwise direction. Make sure, again, it is fitted correctly by turning it several times. The small input shaft is secured to the input transfer gear by a 13 millimeter bolt. You must turn the case tail end up in order to secure the small input shaft in its place. The shim under the washer for the bolt is used to adjust the planet carrier end play. The bolt securing the small input shaft is torque tightened to 30 newton meters. Make sure to keep the shim square under the bolt head when tightening. Again, it is torqued to 30 newton meters. The planet carrier must be adjusted after replacing either the planet carrier, the large sun gear, the large input shaft, or the small input shaft. Adjustment is covered in part two of this series. This is the end of installation of the sun gear and the input shafts, both the large, the small, and of course, the large sun gear. The transmission is again turned, bell housing up to complete installation of the clutches. But before we do that, we like to turn the shafts, the small input shaft, the large input shaft, and the large sun gear several times to ensure that it is properly meshed. By now the components are pre-assembled, the K1, K3 clutch and the K2 clutch and the oil pump. Before installing the K1 clutch, you lube the face of the small input shaft The K1 K3 clutch assembly is then installed and turned several times to make sure that the plates properly mesh. The K3 clutch is responsible for third and fourth gear. Assembly of the K1 K3 clutches are covered in part two. The K2 clutch, the pre-assembled K2 clutch is then installed. Rotate the K2 clutch several times to make sure the plates have meshed. The K2 clutch is responsible for reverse gear. The K1 clutch is responsible for gears 1, 2 gears 3, through gears 3. The K1, K2 clutch end plane must be adjusted. 
This must be done when replacing the K1, the K2 small input shaft or the ATF pump. Up to three shims can be installed, adjusting procedure in part two of this series. Measurement is taken at the case and again at the ATF pump. The B2 support tube is now installed. The cutout at the lower end of the supporting tube engages the tab of the freewheel. Make sure it is properly seated. The B2 clutch or the second and fourth brake is installed on top of the B2 support tube. The first plate is the 3 mm thick plate, which goes on top of the support tube. This is followed by three spring caps installed in the holes of the plate. Three compression springs are then installed into the caps. The first fric friction plate is then installed on the 3 mm outer steel plate. First friction. Another steel plate is installed. Make sure it is properly indexed. Second friction is installed. B2 clutch assembly, building up the B2 clutch assembly. Another steel plate is installed. Again, make sure it is indexed properly. The third friction plate is installed. Another steel. Fourth friction plate is installed. Or if you prefer the internal plates. Then three remaining caps are installed on top of the compression springs, followed by the three millimeter thick outer plate which is installed on top of the comp on top of the caps fitted to the compression springs one adjustment shim is installed two adjustment shim is installed some transmissions may take just one only but on this transmission two is installed to meet the requirement next the retaining ring is installed on top of the adjustment shim Make sure it fits properly. Finally, we would like to check the positions of the three seal rings on the shaft. We now install the oil pump gasket in the case. Sometimes it fits a bit loose, but you have to put a little bit of grease and make sure it sits properly before the installation of the oil pump. Also make sure that the very thin gasket that fits on, on top of the K2 clutch is installed. Then we would like to loop those rings again, those sealing rings make sure they are in, a, in the proper position. Using assembly lube, you lube them 
to prevent damage when fitting the oil pump. The stator tube fits over the turbine shaft with those sealing rings. And finally, we fit the oil pump. Carefully, the oil pump is lowered into the case, completing the assembly of the transmission. The bowls are then torqued to 10 Newton meters.